This video will cover the error analysis and limits of the model section of a lab report. So this is really about two different ideas, random error and systematic error. Random error means a lot of measurements are randomly too low or too high. So there's no pattern to the errors in your data. Some of them are lower than what you would expect. Some of them are higher than what you would expect. And there's no pattern to whether they're low or high. It's just a random combination. The difference between that and systematic error is that systematic error means the points all tend to be too low or all tend to be too high. So I'm going to try to show you a picture using this graph with a correct slope. That random error is connected to slope uncertainty, which is connected to precision, and systematic error is connected to whether your slope and y-intercept match their expected values and how accurate your graph is. But these things are not connected to each other. Random error is not connected to systematic error. Accuracy is not connected to precision, etc. So I'll give you a visualization of that. Let's start with dots that are all basically on the correct spot. So you took some measurements and they all line up with the actual true slope. So when I draw this average line of best fit, you can see that there's no random error. The dots aren't randomly too low or too high. They're exactly where they need to be. And there's no systematic error either, because the points do not tend to be too low or too high. They're all exactly where they need to be. There's no slope uncertainty, because there's no uncertainty about how steep or shallow this average line of best fit should be. There's not much room for it to be much bigger or smaller without missing a lot of the points. So that means that because there's no random error, and because there's no slope uncertainty, this graph is precise. The data points are precise because they line up with each other in a similar expectation of what the actual line will be. They're very close together. And it's also accurate because they line up with the true correct slope. And the y-intercept and slope match the expected values because it's matching up with the correct line. So what I'm trying to show you here is that if there's no random error and no slope uncertainty, there is precision. And if there is random error and there is slope uncertainty, there's no precision. These things will always follow from each other, and you can use this to analyze this part of the lab report. Similarly, if there's no systematic error, that means that your y-intercept and your slope should match the expected result, and you should have accuracy. And if there is systematic error, that means that the y-intercept and slope do not match the true result and you do not have accuracy. So we'll give you a few more examples just to show you how this works. So I've given this data random error. The points are now far apart from each other in their expectation, and so there's not much precision. And the slope uncertainty is now large because the slope could be very small or very large. So there's a lot of uncertainty about what the actual slope is. So like I said, when there is random error, there is slope uncertainty and there is not precision. And this does not affect the systematic error. There's no systematic error because there's no pattern in whether these dots are too low or too high. They're not all going in one direction. They're randomly too low or too high, so there's no systematic error. And you'll notice that because of this, the y-intercept actually does still match the expected value, and the slope still does match the expected value. When you take that average, it still comes out to be the same line. And so there is accuracy, even though there isn't precision. So no systematic error means there is um, a y-intercept and a slope that match the expected result, and there is accuracy. Now I'll give this some systematic error, where all of the points tend to be wrong in one direction. So you can see now there's no random error, there's no slope uncertainty, and there is precision, like I said there would be, and there is systematic error, which means that the y-intercept of the average line of best fit and the slope do not match the correct slope, and the accuracy is also off. So if there is systematic error, the y-intercept and slope shouldn't match, and the accuracy shouldn't be there. So basically, that was a way of showing that this table here is correct. Every double arrow means that one thing implies the other. If there's more random error, there's more slope uncertainty. And if there's more slope uncertainty, there's less precision. And if there's more systematic error, there's less um, matching between the y-intercept and the expected value, and less accuracy. So these things are connected, and these will matter for how you answer these questions. So the first question in the error analysis section is what is the relative or percent uncertainty of your slope? You copy this from your best fit equation that you did a few pages back. The next question is do you have any outliers in your data? This just means a data point that is far away from all your other data points. If there are data points that stick out from the norm, that's an outlier. So you're just going to answer yes or no there. So if you have more slope uncertainty and more outliers, that means that you have more random error. So this is a little subjective, what it means by a little or some or a lot. You'll have to decide for yourself what counts as a lot of random error for you. 
Therefore, how precise is your pattern? So if there's more random error, that means that it's less precise. So you would answer that based on your answer to the previous problem. That's how you fill out the random error section. And for the systematic error, it says, what is your percent difference between the theoretical and actual slope values? You're going to use the percent difference equation to calculate this. That's this equation right here. Percent difference is equal to the theoretical value minus the actual value over the theoretical value times 100%. Sounds complicated, but it's actually pretty simple. I'll give you an example. Let's say that we're measuring the acceleration of gravity and we know based on our physics textbook that it should be 9.81 but we measure it to be 10.21 and we want to know what the percent difference is so we just subtract the theoretical and the actual value um, and then divide it by the theoretical value take the absolute value of that multiply it by 100 percent and i get four percent as the percent difference here. So that's how you calculate these. So you're gonna to have to understand what slope you would expect to have on this graph using your knowledge of the physical situation. Question two, does your expected y-intercept fall within the range of uncertainties on your average y-intercept? So you look at your best fit equation and you look at your y-intercept and its range and try to figure out if the actual expected y-intercept falls within that range. For example, if you expect your y-intercept to be five, and your range is three plus or minus three, that would mean that the maximum is six, so that includes five. That range goes from zero to six, so five is included there, so you would answer yes, that range does include the expected value. So basically, whether your investigation has systematic error, you can answer if things are what you would expect, there's no systematic error. If they don't match expectations, you do have systematic error. And if there's no systematic error, your pattern is accurate. And if there is systematic error, it's not accurate. Last thing to know about is the limits of the model. Um, a limit of a model is just a real world situation that would cause your best fit equation to eventually stop working for making predictions. Because the average best fit equation is a math equation that basically predicts that this thing will behave in the same mathematical way, no matter how big or small your IV and DV are. But we know that this isn't really true in the real world. As an example, investigating the stretch of a spring based on the mass hanging from the end, we could get an equation that looks like this. The stretch is equal to 0.5 meters per kilogram times the mass. So this works for small normal numbers like two kilograms. If I hang two kilograms from the end of the spring, this is saying that the spring should stretch by one meter. So that works for small numbers, but if I throw in really large numbers, this equation is still making predictions. If I put in a million kilograms, this is saying that my spring should stretch by 500,000 meters, which is something like 250 miles or something, which I know is wrong. Somewhere before it stretches that far, the spring is going to deform or break. So even though that my equation, my best fit equation, is telling me that it would stretch that far, I know that there's a limit to what this equation can predict. And one of the limits is that if the mass becomes too large, the spring will deform or break. So that is a limit to my model equation. Another limit is that this equation works fine for negative numbers. If I plug in negative two kilograms, it says that the spring should stretch by negative one meters. But I know that there's no such thing as negative mass in physics, and so I can say the mass and length cannot be negative. So even though you can plug that in and get a good result, it doesn't actually work in the real world, and that's what the limit of the model is talking about. Things that you can plug into the equation fine, but don't work in the real world. So the writing in red is what I would write for the limits of my model section for the spring example. So that's what you need to know about error analysis and limits of the model.